Welcome back to the show, everybody. We got a great one for you today. I love the smell of crypto in the morning. 110 million XRP have been moved around. Here's a little hint. It wasn't me. Bitcoin hits an 18-month low on supply. More central banks doing testing and pilot testing with CBDCs in other, other areas as well, and they're liking it. Standard Custody Trust Company and Crypto Law and John Deaton today. Some really important points we need to make there. Aspen Institute Conference is about to happen soon, and it's going to have Brad Garlinghouse, Gary Gensler from the SEC not facing off, but they'll both be there as well as many others. We'll get into that as well. And how about that Google cryptocurrency ban on advertising? We'll get into that. And the U.S. Treasury suspends sale of state and local government securities at the end of this month, just a few days away. Let's go ahead and roll that beautiful intro. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley Above and everything that we're talking about here today. $1.387 trillion cryptocurrency market cap, ladies and gentlemen. That's where we're at today. Bitcoin coming in at 33893 It's up 8.25% on the seven day, half of that on the 24 hour. Maybe we are turning around. Right. I can tell you there's about 50 billion or so, maybe a little more than that, that's come back into the crypto market space. We were at one point three, three something yesterday. So encouraging. We're up four point four seven overall on the crypto market cap as well. Let's look down here very quickly at XRP. Sixty cents, baby. Two point seven two percent on the 24 hour 5.39% on the seven day. So half of that gain has been in the last 24 hours with the return of some of that money, it appears. Let's take a look at the range right now. And we see that uh, it is 68 or 0.6089 is the price right now. The bottom of the range is at 0.5778 and the top of the range is at 0. 0.6139. We'll keep an eye on it, but it does look like it's showing some strong energy today. Maybe we will push and stay above that 60 cent range. Challenge that next resistance point, I believe at 72 cents, if my memory serves me correctly. And if so, we could be looking and staring down the barrel of a dollar XRP much sooner than any of us really think. So, Eternal optimist. We keep going. This is Bernard. Shout out to Bernard. And it says, uh, I wonder if this is anything to do with my XRP transfer from BitTrue and Binance yesterday that hasn't appeared until now. I'm sure I transferred it rightfully. I'm sure you did too, Bernard. But I can tell you that the Ripple and Binance caught on radar as 110 million XRP got moved while the company keeps bolstering its fair notice defense in the lawsuit against the SEC. I tell you, you know, you wonder, where's it all going to? Is this preparing for a hashtag relist? Or is this, you know, just them handling ODL in other areas and regions of the country and participating? I I don't know the answer to it. But it does fascinate me to see so many XRP being moved around while U.S. retail investors are largely handicapped from getting it. All right, looking right here, I get a lot of questions about a lot of different things. One of them is, is what is hedging, right? And just in short, hedging, an example of hedging is like picking something. If you, let's say if you're invested in the stock market, you feel like the stock market may have a uh, a bad time coming, right? You may see some downside in that. And you may say, hey, you know, I don't want to exit my position there, but I want to hedge and own something else that may either hold its value while the market goes down or even go up because it doesn't or does correlate with whatever your position is in stocks. And people normally do that with something like metals, gold and silver, things of that nature. But this is the fastest 10 second definition of hedging I've ever seen in my life. I want you to take a look at this and watch this gentleman right here do his bit of hedging to this car splashing water. That right there is that gentleman hedging, okay? 
And you know what? And the person in the car realizes that they're hedging and they decide to dial it back immediately. So there you go. That's a, that is one of the greatest visuals of a hedge I've ever seen in my life. Just for fun. But here, this is pretty interesting. Bitcoin exchange supply hits 18-month low, decreasing sell-off risk. Now, this is interesting to me because I'm not going to read the article to you, but basically the article suggested it could mean that we won't see so much sell-off because people are pulling the Bitcoin off onto cold wallets and taking it off of the exchanges, which really, you know, sends the signal that people are looking to hold for at least a period of time. So with that being said, you have to wonder how many sellers are left out here. Market is turning around this morning. We'll see if it holds. This is very good news. And shout out to Cardano and Charles Hoskinson and the whole Cardano team. Cardano to become compatible with browsers via new upgrade. Now, I got into this and it didn't say uh, specifically which browsers, but it does say that uh, the upgrade will allow running the Plutus uh, I believe is how you say it, application backend in JavaScript, the most widely used programming language on the web. So there you have it. They're looking to have support and add support for web browsers and mobile devices through the application's backend running in JavaScript, which allows Cardano smart contracts to be compatible with web browsers. How about that? We're moving into the fourth industrial revolution, right? Everything's changing. The inter internet of value is actually here. That is pretty remarkable to me. Now, this is pretty remarkable to me too. This is Bond Crypt XRP. You should give him a follow. Let's get him to 10,000 followers, shall we? Finally, India seems to have decided on something. If anybody's been in this space long enough, you know India has been back and forth like a bad tennis match. India and Nigeria ramp up plans to launch central bank digital currencies. And we just saw that October, I believe, was the uh, test pilot phase uh, date from Nigeria. Central Bank. So that's exciting there. Now we know French Central Bank, uh, Bank de France, recently carried out its fifth experiment on central banks with Tunisia Central Bank digital currency. When we go into this, and I covered this the other day, but I just wanted to highlight here the success of this experiment is an opportunity to start thinking about the deployment of alternative channels for cross border transfers initiated by the Tunisian community in Europe and Tunisia. And it says here, as of press time, as press statement explained, this experiment involved a simulation on a private blockchain of the issuance and settlement of unlisted securities, unlisted securities, and of the settlement of listed securities. Settlement of securities were simulated by central bank digital currency issued on the blockchain. This to me is phenomenal because it just goes to show you how all of these different pilot phases are, in some cases, taking on very, very specific tasks to make sure that these work in these settings. And I tell you, I think it, this is just a fine an example as any that lets us know that there is a new day coming and the central banks will absolutely be a part of it. They are excited about this opportunity, the success of the experiment, right? This is the, this is where we're going. I mean, one of these days, price is going to match all of this fundamental news. And I have a feeling the catalyst will become regulation. It will become come from clarity, I should say, right? Now, here's some more clarity right here. This is from James Rule XRP. Shout out to you, my friend. Standard Custody and Trust Company are alive and well. Now, I'm not saying they're live. I'm just saying they're alive and well. Now, what I want to remind people about this is, is that obviously this has ties right on back to Ripple with Arthur Brito and David Schwartz. Standard Custody offers secure custody solutions that stand up to the strictest regulations and unlock the value of digital assets for institutional investors. This is exciting to me. It really, really is. And look, when you go into this, let me see if I can get it here. Here we go. So there's Arthur Brito's comment. We combine blockchain, institutional, and HSM expertise to create inspired solution to address today's problems. Arthur Brito, president and founder, not pictured. It's fascinating to me. Jack McLeod, CEO, David Schwartz. Shout out to David. 
Antoinette O'Gorman, formerly of Ripple as well. And coming down here, and all these people are, are remarkable, but Tim Keeney. Mm-hmm. Tim Keeney used to be on the on the board and executive for BNY Mellon. And he handled, listen to this number now, one quarter of the world's assets. Is this thing on? He handled one quarter of the world's global assets. That, to me, tells me, if you were ever wondering, like, what, how big is standard custody and trust company really designed to be? Well, I think you look no further than what Tim Keeney thinks, because now he's there. And this gentleman's expertise are about handling massive amount of assets under management. So I think that's a sign of what's to come here. Now, looking and changing gears just a bit here from crypto law, the pre-trial phase of Ripple case has been so embarrassing for the SEC legal team that it has more laughs per episode than most network sitcoms. I completely agree. Senator Warren's letter to Gensler as a power grab. Now, this is interesting because when I go into this, I was like, hey, whoa, whoa, hold up a minute. We know that Gary Gensler had a call to action to Congress to give him the legislation he needs to put in a unified framework for cryptocurrencies and digital assets. Senator Warren responded back and said, you have until July 28, Gary Gensler, to get us what you think needs to be a part of this crypto regulation. But this article goes into the idea that Elizabeth Warren and Gary Gensler could potentially harm cryptocurrency space, and especially Elizabeth Warren. It's said here in the summary here that Elizabeth Warren is an enemy to cryptocurrency. Experts believe Warren is colluding with anti-crypto zealots inside the SEC to cut crypto down before agency can legitimize it. The U.S. Securities Exchange Commission, uh, Jerry, Gary Gensler, excuse me, had best not move in Warren's direction too decisively. And I don't know that he will, to be honest with you. So I don't want to be an alarmist here. But what I do want to remind you here, uh, Elizabeth Warren has made herself clear that she sees cryptocurrencies as a bogus private digital money and a kind of social pestilence that needs to be annihilated through regulation. In short, she has no idea what blockchain technology is, what it does, how it works, or why people use it. But it has to be stopped, and she's going to try to stop it. And I just want to bring you down here to this particular part. It says, while Warren and the SEC were laying out their rear guard action, a bipartisan group in the House introduced the Securities Clarity Act, which seeks to rein the SEC and set clear rules for how digital assets can be regulated. It is sponsored by conservative representative Tom Emmer, uh, who leads the National Republican Co Congressional Committee. Republican Darren, uh, I'm sorry, Representative Darren Soto, who's a Democrat in Florida, prominent Joe Biden supporter in 2020 Florida primary, and Ro Kahana, Democrat California, who co-chaired Bernie Sanders' presidential campaign and represents Silicon Valley. So it's a nice, solid, bipartisan proposed bill, right? One of Warren's Republican colleagues on the Senate Banking Committee, freshman Wyoming Senator Cynthia Loomis hails from a state that has passed model regulatory framework for digital assets and is seeking to attract startup crypto companies to build their projects there and create jobs. Ripple Labs has moved its registration there. If you remember, this is a reminder that they did, in fact, start a LLC in Wyoming. We will see if that gets acted upon any further than we understand it to be. Looking here, this is John Deaton reminding all of us that recently has been floated that Stellar will be involved in a MoneyGram purchase of MoneyGram itself via third party. 2018, Ripple acquired 9% stake in MoneyGram. The SEC allowed this purchase knowing that XRP would be distributed to MoneyGram and that MoneyGram would not hodl the XRP but sell it in the secondary market on exchanges to individual investors. And then two years later, we see what Bond Crypt has here, 
which I don't know if his, his tweet's still available or not. There it is. Yeah. And we covered this when it came out. Ripple rival Stellar and talks to acquire MoneyGram. Stellar Network is reportedly cooperating with global private equity firm Advent International to buy leading money transfer company MoneyGram, according to Bloomberg Report. Now, with that being said, that is a point I used to make all the time when the SEC complaint first came out. It's like, wait a minute, the SEC had to approve the partnership with Ripple and MoneyGram when that happened, and they knew full well how they felt about XRP then. That's why something very funny business has, has been going on with the SEC from day one around Ripple and XRP. This is a little chilling right here. I'm not even going to kid you here. This is the U.S. Treasury will suspend sale of state and local government securities on July 30th. From Gold Telegraph, Treasury will need to start taking certain additional extraordinary measures to prevent U.S. default if Congress does not act by August 2nd. This is pretty interesting. I mean, you know, obviously we've seen Congress back up against the wall in the 11th hour. They extend the debt ceiling and things of that nature. You know, this may very well be another one of those moments. But the reality is it's a real, real stark reminder of what kind of situation the economy is in, not just in the United States, but globally. There's trouble coming and they better get to fixing it. I can tell you that. Very interesting that both of these gentlemen will be speaking at this same event at the same time, August 3rd, Google just so happens to be lifting the band on advertising crypto. And what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about this from Tiho Bedic. I guess it is. Uh, XRP, shout out to you for this post here. Aspen Institute is what we're talking about. And Anya Manuel from Ripple is going to be there. We see uh, Jin Lequin, Lequin, I don't know how you say it, excuse me. President Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank and so many others. Stuart Levy from Diem Association is going to be there. Remember, Diem recently moved from where? They moved from Switzerland, withdrew their applications, moved back to the United States. And Christian Catalini from DM also told us, we'll use DM a placeholder for the actual digital United States dollar once it is ready. That's the word on the street. And we see Brad Garlinghouse will also be here as well as Gary Gensler. Let's take a look at this really quickly. There's old Brad Garlinghouse right there bringing it in. Yeah, you know it. Then we got Ron Green, CISO, MasterCard. And there is Stuart Levy, CEO, DM Association. And if we go back here, we will see... And let me just get this. There it is. Gary Gensler himself from the Securities Exchange Commission. Now, what's interesting about all of this is, you know, it's thought leaders from different areas of industry talking about what they think are important for the next year plan or whatever's coming up. Crypto, digital assets, stable coins are on the table. This is a huge discussion because the reality is if you're looking at what's going on in the traditional economy, like with the U.S. information we just looked at with the Treasury, they need to reignite the economy. And one of the ways to do that is through digital money and digital assets. With the right payment networks, you could really reignite the economy with the velocity of money how quickly you can move money from one hand to another, eliminating everyone to have these enormous deep balances to cover daily payment flows. If you could solve that problem as you reignite and refire up the economy, you could really make the pain threshold, I think, a lot smaller than what it would be otherwise. Anyway, that's what we're talking about here. This is exciting. And don't forget, at the same time that that is happening with that conference, and it should be interesting to see if we, if we find that Gary Gensler and Brad Garlinghouse end up being even on the same stage. We don't know if that'll happen, though. But Google to reverse its crypto exchange and wallet advertisement ban. Now, think of all of this coming together cumulatively here, you know. What is it that Google knows that they're going to lift their advertisement ban on crypto and exchanges starting August 3rd? Isn't that interesting? 
What is it that Google knows that it's all of a sudden okay to start letting exchanges and crypto companies advertise again? What do they know that's coming? The other question to this is, and what exchanges and what companies ever in the world would begin a huge, deep position in a marketing campaign unless they fully understood that the benefits would be remarkable? And maybe, just maybe, that's going to be due to the fact that we get some kind of regulation and legislation that clears the path to not stifle innovation for digital assets and crypto going forward. That would be remarkable. I think the signs are showing us things are going in the right direction. Whenever it jumps, I don't know. But Google knows something, and they feel like it's okay to lift a ban on crypto advertising starting, what, next week or so? Pretty remarkable where things are going here. I can only expect that more advertising will bring more money and more people into this space. That's going to do it for me. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. Don't forget about Unstoppable Domains. Pure VPN, one of the many different ways I hide my anonymity online. And I trust Capital, the best gold crypto silver IRA. Check out all the links in the description and comment box. They're trusted, vetted links of products and services I use each and every day. I'll catch all of you on the next one.